How's it going everyone? It's Javi from Weather Sponge about thousand and in this video we're going to focus on the 2022-2023 winter season for the United States and determine if we could be in for a record breaking winter season when it comes to snowfall and cold temperatures for the United States. But before I begin, make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content. So let's begin by taking a look at the current snow extent for the Northern Hemisphere or the current snow cover map for the Northern Hemisphere. And you're probably wondering why we're taking a look at the snow cover map this early in the year when we're not even close to the winter season yet. And the reason why is because the snow cover that we, the extent of the snow cover that we see in the Northern Hemisphere, typically during the fall months, plays a big role in terms of uh, of whether or not we're going to experience a quarter and snowier than average winter or a warmer and less snowy than average winter and typically what happens when the snow cover is more extensive is that it's typically a lot colder than usual for the northern portions of the northern hemisphere right around the arctic area and as a result that leads to a disruption of the polar vortex where the polar vortex as a result is more likely to dip for a southward and bring those colder and snowier than average chapters to the United States. Since there's so much snow cover, um, that would mean that the short wave radiation would be absorbed by the snow rather than the surface. And since, of course, snow heats up a lot slower than um, than what the surface um, than the surface, and that would mean that it would be typically colder um, over the northern hemisphere. And as a result, more likely that we're going to see more jet stream dips at bring colder temperatures to the United States. And as you can see right now, we're seeing pretty a uh, pretty extensive amount of snow cover throughout the Northern Hemisphere, ex even going as far south as the United States, where we do have portions of, Miss of Minnesota and Wisconsin um, covered with snow at this time, as a result of a trough that recently just came through and brought some snow. And comparing that to the average amount of, of snow extent we see during this, during October 15th, comparing that um, to what typically happens we do see that as of right now the snow the snow cover throughout the northern hemisphere is a bit more extensive than what we typically see on a, on October 15th which could mean that we could be in for a more colder and snowier than average winter and potentially record breaking because the amount of snow cover that we've um that we started with for the fall months throughout the northern hemisphere was one of the most extensive we've seen in 13 years since 2009 which plays um which could mean that we're we could be in for a potentially record-breaking snow and winter season since we're seeing the snow cover extents um, begin to spread so early right around the northern hemisphere. As you can see, um, this is the um, Eurasian snow cover extent and pretty much um, the Eurasian region pretty much um, includes the northern portions of Russia and pretty much the area surrounding the North Pole. And we do see that for, um, for October 2022, we're seeing a lot on um, the snow cover be a lot more extensive and widespread than many other recent um, winters that we've seen. Um, over um, as of recent, we have seen it drop more towards the middle of the pack, but this is as of October 11th. It isn't accounting for the snow that moved to the United States. So I'll still say that the Eurasian snow cover is still on the upper end of the spectrum, which could mean that we could be in for a snower. Uh, snowier and colder than average winter and take a look at the current rank when it comes to the snow extent air um snow cover extent area for the Eurasia for the Eurasia region we su do see that the rank right now in terms of area is six out of 54 so over the past 54 years of keeping um data so far this year has been the sixth largest area when it comes to snow cover extent which is definitely major and if we were to take a look at the top five ranks which includes the years of 1969 um the winter of 1977 as well as winter of night of two um 2003 we do see that 
um, those winters were abnormally cold and snowy for a lot of the northern United States. So I'd say based on this fact that we're seeing the snow cover extent a little bit larger than usual, I'd say that we're more likely to see a colder and snowier than average winter. And I wouldn't rule out the possibility of this being record breaking since we're seeing nearly record breaking snow cover extent this early in the year where right now where um, the rank is six out of 54 years, which is definitely on the almost a record breaking territory at that that point now take a look at and as a result of an ex um um, an extensive amount of snow cover throughout the northern hemisphere that will play a role in the north atlantic oscillation because of course the temperatures will be colder that will weaken the polar vortex and that will weaken the ridge that's going to be located just to the um, so that's going to be located just to the south of let's say the jet stream and that would allow for um, the jet stream to be more lenient on dipping for a southward because the westerly winds will weaken as a result of temperatures for a southward being a little bit cooler than average which reduces instability reduces the westerly winds and as a result that that makes it more likely for the cold air right around the arctic to meander further southward since the winds are so weak and as a result of this the north at um, we're expecting the North Atlantic Oscillation to be negative for the most part entering the winter months into December and even into January and I wouldn't be surprised if this continues into February and what a negative North Atlantic Oscillation does is that pretty much um, that pretty much yeah like I said weakens the westerly winds and that brings and that's makes it more likely for that cold air and that snow to meander for a southward since the westerly winds are so weak and take a look at what typically at what um, happened during the years where we've seen the snow cover this extensive or at least close to being as extensive as we're seeing now we do see that the northeast easily experiences um, much colder than average temperatures typically when we're seeing snow cover this extensive this early throughout the northern hemisphere which is definitely um definitely something we're going to need to pay close attention to as that will increase the likelihood that it's going to be a colder and snowier than average winter especially for the northeast and right around the great lakes region and of course this includes areas like the northern midwest and potentially the southeast could get involved with colder than average conditions as a result of a negative north atlantic oscillation which would be triggered by this amount of snow cover we're seeing right now now take a look at what happens during a positive and negative atlantic um oscillation we do see that um during a positive um Atlantic Oscillation, we do see that the westerly winds are stronger, which keeps the cold air further northward, while during um, negative North Atlantic Oscillation, we do see that the jet stream is a lot weaker, the wind, the westerly winds are a lot weaker, which means that the cold air is more likely to dip for a southward, and the amount of snow cover we're seeing right now would weaken the jet stream, because that would decrease the instability for the westerly winds to be as strong, so as a result, we should expect a negative North Atlantic um, oscillation headed into this winter which will allow for more like um, more likely than not more snow and colder temperatures than usual now another factor of course we're gonna need to take a look at as well is the La Nina or the Enzo forecast over the next several months and we do see that most likely for majority of the winter the chance of a La Nina will be the most probable um, that, that could change into the later winter um, the later winter where entering into February and March we do see that eventually a neutral pattern is more likely but for the majority of the winter we should expect La Nina type conditions and even though the probability does lower as we continue on more and more into the winter where the neutral pattern is more likely it takes some time for the atmosphere to really adapt to the changes in sea surface temperatures right around the eastern pacific equatorial region so it so although the chance of a neutral phase does is the more probable scenario for the month of february and march it's going to take some time for the atmosphere to adjust to fit neutral light conditions so as a result i'd expect for pretty much 
much the vast majority of the winter we should expect la nina type conditions and what and this is what typically happens during a la nina we see a variable polar jet stream which dips noticeably far south which does bring colder than average conditions for the pacific northwest as well as the northern midwest states and since we're more likely to see jet stream dips associated with a la nina that would steer colder air sometimes to the northeast for potentially nor'easters of form as well as all of the instability that a jet stream dip would bring to the northeast over the very warm Gulf Stream waters. And we do see that simply more moist than average right around the Ohio River Valley, and that could extend the northeast um, so in some years. And then we do see that um, just uh, south of that into the southeast and um, the southwest, we do see that simply warmer and drier than average as there isn't really a subtropical jet moving through that would moisten up the conditions for the southeast so we also need to put heavy weight on the fact that a la nina pattern is expected to stay around going into the winter months so we should base our forecast sort of like what typically would happen during a la nina and of course um take into account the possibility of a negative atlantic multi um atlantic um oscillation that's going to build for the northern united states so as a result i for pretty much the majority of the northern united states it should be colder and more moist than average and for a lot of the southern united states especially since there is a drought i'd expect warmer and drier than average conditions now take a look at the current drought monitor and this will of course play be a play another big role in terms of type of conditions you will experience for um, this winter we do see that um, much uh, pretty much anywhere that's just the west of the Mississippi River Valley should expect drier and almost more moist than average condition I mean um, and, um, warmer than average conditions I meant to say for a lot of the south especially the southwestern portion of the United States because simply when it's drier than average there's less moisture in the soil and dry soil heats up a lot faster and a lot more than moist soil would so since it's so dry and since there isn't a lot of moisture um, along the surface and that would mean that the surface will heat up a lot faster for um, warmer temperatures to be more likely and of course during a drought there's less clouds that would block the short wave radiation from the sun so it would be warmer during a drought and of course drier and like I've been saying in a lot of my previous videos it takes a long while for a drought to go away so I find it unlikely that within a matter of two months we could see this drought completely go away so for anywhere that's just to the west of the Mississippi River Valley outside of maybe the northern portion the extreme northern portions of the United States you should expect a drier and war warmer than average winter thanks to this ongoing drought that's going on and it isn't expected to go away especially for southern United States where a La Nina typically does promote drier and warmer than average conditions so it will only make it worse for, unfortunately for the southwest which is um which has been a major problem because some rivers such as Mississippi River has been it um has been going low on water which will definitely be a major problem for a lot of the western United States now I'm taking a look um, at the sea surf temperature anomaly for the um, pretty much for the entire globe and I want to focus more in on of course the United States we do see that for the most part sea surf temperatures are warmer than average along the coast so if you live along the coast that could make a difference when it comes to average air temperature this winter so if you're right along the coast you should expect potentially um a little bit more warmer conditions and potentially more moist than average conditions thanks to uh, warmer than average sea surf temperatures which would allow for the air temperature to be warmer and the air to hold a lot more water vapor since the air temperature is is warmer so as a result along the coast you should expect warmer than average conditions um, outside of maybe areas like the northeast where I'm expecting very um, very strong jet stream dips and I think th um, these warmer than average sea surf temperatures right along the United States should increase the instability for potentially more nor'easters to form right around the northeast and overall more moist and average conditions to develop um, throughout the United States now take a look at um, the CFS um, climate Climatology model, which does um, which does forecast what type of conditions you should expect when it comes to precipitation as well as temperature for this winter. We do see that 
Um, the CFS model is expecting a lot of the southern United States to be drier than average, which is definitely not anything surprising. That typically is what happens during a La Nina um, during the heart of the winter months and for the three month average you see that much of the southern united states is drier than average we do see more moist than average conditions for the pacific northwest but that is a part of what ha typically happens during a la nina and the precipitation is pretty much average throughout the northeast i would lean to that precipitation being a little bit um higher than average since it's so dry for majority of the united states the only area that isn't under a drought is the northeastern portion of the united states so i do expect that all this convergence will occur right around the northeast so i do expect the northeast to be a little bit more moist than average this winter and now taking a look at the temperature anomaly for the three month average we do see that um for pretty much the most of the united states it should be warmer than average however i take it um, I take this with a slight grain of salt because CFS model um, typically does have a bias of um, forecasting warmer than average temperatures for a lot of the United States. We do see the temperatures hover more around average for the Northeast is as a result of a negative um, North Atlantic um, at, um, oscillation that's expected to build. But I do expect the temperatures to be colder than what you see here for the Northern United States. But for the Southern United States and the Southwest, I do expect the temperatures to be much warmer than average this winter now take a look at my overall forecast when it comes to the 2022 2023 winter season i expect it to be extremely cold and snowy than average this will be where the worst of the winter will be right around the northeast and the great lakes is as a result of a negative atlantic um north atlantic oscillation and i do and a la nina typically does bring more jet stream dips to the northeast so i do expect conditions would be much colder and snowier than average for the northeast potentially record-breaking since we have seen that snow extent be a lot more extensive than what we've seen in pretty much in history so i there could be that possibility that this could be a record-breaking cold and snowy winter and i expect that cold and snow to extend westward as well to a lesser extent i expect the cold to focus in on northeast warm and moist for the southeast and keep in mind um, watch out for tornadoes tornadoes at um because typically the frequency of tornadoes does increase when there's a la nina and um i expect conditions to be warmer and drier than average for the southwestern portion of the united states thanks to a current drought that's going on and la, uh, la nina typically does bring those types of conditions to the southwestern portion of the united states so unfortunately i do expect the drought to continue for a southwestern portion of the United States. But yeah, guys, if you want even more in-depth forecasts for um, re um for your location regarding the amount of snow you should receive, what type of winter conditions you receive, just make sure to comment down your location and area down below, and I'll do my best to try to answer how much exact snowfall you should experience this winter and what type of conditions you should expect in your specific area. So make sure to comment down below if you're interested. But um, anyways, guys, I uh, thank you guys for watching. Watching. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more weather content and I hope you guys all have a great day.